So yesterday's deadline day saw Elijah Adebayo leave for Luton Town and Zach Jules leave for MK Dons. They've been replaced by Derek O.C. Yor, and yes, I did have to check his name, and Max Melbourne, both in on loan. They have split the fan base. Uh, a lot of fans frustrated at low knees. And then on the other hand, fans wanting money to be kept in the club rather than wasting them on a replacement straight away. So I thought I'll do a question and answer type of video. Thank you for everyone that submitted questions. There is a, a lot. So I'm going to just get straight in there and we will see what comes up. So, a lot of these are going to be covered by multiple people, so I apologise if I've picked someone else who's asked the same question. Going straight in there, Luke Jones, thoughts on the players coming in, thoughts on the transfer window as a whole, thoughts of a Walsall playoff push, and will DC be here next season? This is, a lot of the questions revolve around this, so I'll break it down. Uh, starting with the transfer window as a whole. I think it's been okay. I don't think it's been bad. I don't think it's been great. Uh, I think the difficulty is that we've signed a lot of players that we, we just don't know about, which is often the way. We've seen the likes of Tariq Wright come in, who has made an instant impact. One game looks very good, an assist to Adebayo, but an assist adds much needed creativity into the side. Then we've got Jaden Reed, who I think could maybe go down the Aiden George route, where now that we've got your in, he may be slightly lower down on the pecking order. But it all depends on the system that Clark's going to play. And unfortunately, we won't know that for a few weeks, as no doubt he will be tinkering around. I like the addition of Vincent. Uh, I think that that is a really key, key um, player to bring in. I was unsure to begin with, but then watching him on his sort of very late, debut I thought that he looked like the sort of player that we need he seemed quite good on the ball can pick out a pass and with a certain Danny Guthrie leaving that's a gap that needed filling in terms of yesterday's business there's no way of buttering it up it's not what we wanted we didn't want to see two of our better players leave to be to have loans come in and loans who really haven't been playing that much recently However, I don't think this was the transfer window or at least the day to be getting players in that are regular starters. It was always going to be difficult to prize players away from clubs where they're starting. And I think the club have done well to get in some loans that potentially, if they go well, could sign. But we just don't know yet. We just don't know. Um, I mean, Melbourne has played in League One. His experience is in League One. Yes, it's not a vast amount, but he has played at a slightly higher level, which I think is this, the right type of player to be bringing in. And your, I've only seen a sort of late substitute appearance when he played against us, and he looked quick. He looked determined and, I mean, he scored a very good goal. So, based off of that performance, I think it's difficult to say anything negative about them. The issue is the fact that we've sold players and replaced them with loans, which means our squad is now full in terms of loans, meaning that, obviously, not all of them are going to be able to play. My big concern is that we have got Reed your and right all as attacking players our own attacking players are very limited uh, we've obviously got Wes we've got Josh Gordon we'll have Holden we'll, we've got Lavery who needs to really kick on now he has to perform for us and Jack Nolan 
and most of those are out of contract. The big thing with selling the players and releasing Guthrie is that it frees up funds to be able to up the wages that we can offer. Um, it means that we might be able to retain some of the players that we may not have had the finances for. So I think there's a lot, there's a lot of moving parts in this transfer window that has happened. And Daryl's already said that he had an eye on the future with players that have been bought in. Whether that is right, which I don't think it will, I think Villa rate him too highly. Whether it's see how this season goes, extend the loan another season, who knows. A lot of players have to perform between now and the end of the season for us to really judge whether this was a good or a bad transfer window. As everyone knows, I like to remain optimistic, so we will we will see. I was I was a bit disheartened after yesterday, uh, and I think the fan base was. But overall, I feel we we kind of did what we had to do. I will get on to more of that in a bit. Uh, okay, next question is from Chris Sheldon. Have Daryl Clark and Lee Pomlet taken us anywhere, or have they in fact taken us backwards? That's a very, very big question, and one that I'm going to look at in a later video, because I think it's the sort of topic that needs a longer, longer sort of chat about. He then follows it up with, do we think we'll see any of the money used from today's transfers used in the summer, or will it be used to cover revenue loss due to the pandemic? I personally feel that, in a way, it, it will be used to, for both. I think the money will obviously cover losses that have been made. Um, the fact that we've been rumoured to receive about 300000 from the two sales and the fact that we are facing about a million down on revenue because of the pandemic, that's a that's a big chunk to get in. And I think that is one of the reasons that really that the hand was forced. Um, getting nearly a third from transfers, and I, I would assume other clauses within there that may prove lucrative further down the line, has will plug a bit of a gap. Um, obviously, if the money is there and if the club is... is in a better financial state, it will it will help in the summer. If the club is at minus a million uh, because of the pandemic, then it's at minus a million. If it's at minus seven hundred thousand, yes, it's not great, but it's better. So, to cover the shortfall due to the pandemic will only help the club in the summer. Uh, although it might not be that that 300,000 goes straight on recruitment, it will be filtered out. But if the club as a whole is losing less money, it will mean that the budget can go further. I think the big thing that I mentioned before is that I feel that it will help us retain players. I think seeing Jules and Adebayo come in, grow, develop and move on to bigger clubs. I mean, let's face it. Adebayo is now a, a mid-table championship team striker. He, you know, they go on a run. There are only a few places outside the playoffs. I know it's a big push, but he's he's had a big jump. I think that's a bit of a selling factor now for the club, that we can develop these players and that we've got a proven track record under this management, which is something that I will go to in this separate video about Clark and Pomlet. Um and what was the final part to your question? Uh, and how long are we going to be in League 2? I There's questions about the playoffs and there's questions that I'll come to later about that. I personally feel that next season is a, a huge, huge season. Um, as is obviously the, the rest of this because we aren't out of the race yet. We're, we're only a few points off the playoffs. You never know. Teams can beat anyone. And we don't. We really don't know who, how good these players can be. It might click. 
um, we might see the likes of your starting up top with right on the wing and they could form a blossoming uh, partnership. We just we just don't know enough yet. Um, I've seen a few things about us looking below rather than up. I, there's no way that we're looking at going down. At the very least, we'll be mid-table, which isn't great, to be, fr- to be quite honest, because I think the fact that we've had two players go off to leagues above shows the sort of quality that we have. Um, I think, realistically, the club should be aiming for top 10 this season, and I don't see why we can't do that. Uh, however, I will wait for someone to quote me on that come the end of the season. Right, the next question is from James Turley. Is it concerning that DC barely played Jules last season despite clearly being one of our better players? This has been proven by his sale. Is it likely that other players he's making the same mistake with? That's a, a tricky one. Um, for those who are at the fans forum, they will know that Clark was very open that Jules training stats, which I know became a bit of a joke, but were lower than anyone else's. And he made that public after discussing it with Jules. And I think we all know, we all saw last season that Jules wasn't the player that he is this season. He's obviously knuckled down, worked hard, and he's earned this move. Um, So it's split. I think Clark gets very frustrated with players who have the potential that don't train hard. But on the other hand, if there are players that aren't training hard that start every week, what message does that send out? It's a, it's a balance. The fans of you've all summed this up perfectly. There's obviously talent there, and why didn't we use it more last season to try and really dig him out of the rut that he was in? But then on the flip side, Daryl Clark's management has seen him progress this season. Uh, I don't think there's a a right or wrong viewpoint on this. Um, I think last season, I, for me, Jules looks better at left back than centre back. And with Pring there last season, I know he had fitness concerns, but with Pring there last season, he was always going to be the starting left back. Um, and I also feel that Cockrell Mollett had a better run in the team last season than he's shown this season. So I think there were other factors as well. But it, we need to remember that when Jules was playing last season, he wasn't the player that he was this season. Um, so whatever work has gone into him has has worked and has proven. Uh, and he's now obviously got the fruits for his labour. Okay, next question from Sam Emery. Forced by the hand of COVID, can you see us pushing for the playoffs now? Um, I think... Sam summed that up well. The, the, the deals have been done, being forced. The hand's been forced here by by um, by the, the pandemic. It's like I said before. There's rumours that each club will be about a million down um, because of the pandemic. Uh, so receiving that sort of money with sell-ons, I think, is is good business. Um, but obviously, the thing that we're all more focused on is the playoffs. The difficulty is it's it's how quickly things will click, because there have been games where it has, and there have been games where it hasn't. Obviously, now we've got new players coming in, not just uh, yesterday, but at the start of the window as well, or during the window, there's been quite a turnover. Obviously, we've lost Nurse, um, which is Bristol City recalling him because of injury. We've lost Jules on the left, so you would assume that Melbourne will slot straight in at left back. But he then has to click with the defence around him. I personally feel having the game off at the weekend, it was a big thing. I think that it man- it made the club focus on what they needed. And it also means that, that Clark can start really reevaluating his side. 
For me, I think the quicker we get Holden back, the quicker we can mount this playoff charge. I do feel that with Wes starting to look better, especially if he's cutting in uh, to the middle and having that kind of attack in front three more, um, they're clicking better. Uh, I feel that Wes, Holden, Wright, Nolan, they're all players that now make that attack look quite strong um, I obviously see Bates and Kinsella staying in the middle I think Vincent will be pushing them though which is good and I expect uh, Sinclair to continue to kind of come on when we need to have a bit of a battle uh, which he knows that role we know that role um, really it's only changed a couple of players which I think I have forgotten as well. It's a left back and one attacking player. However, the attacking player, it's not that these loans will start, or it's not that your is now going to be the new Adebayo, that he's going to be that starting striker. We've got players that, like Gordon, who we've all said has been playing out of position, playing on the right, the centre has been playing on the left. It will give him the chance to push forward, which is a question that I'll come to later. If we can hit the ground running with this new system, with these new players, I don't see why we can't mount a playoff push. I'm not saying we're going to get into the playoffs or that we'll even win them if we get in there. But I don't think it's as doom as and gloom as I initially thought and as I've seen as well. It's um, I think there's, there's definitely some positives to take from it. That's my optimism cap on. Now putting my concerned cap. We've been playing a lot of long ball. And the reason that Adebayo has been doing well is because he was there to hold the ball up. If we now put Gordon as that striker, however good he is at holding the ball up and however good he is at winning headers, he's a completely different build of a striker. We need it to be going to his feet. We need to be playing it along the floor for him to run to. So we need to change the system a bit and it's how quickly we adapt to that and I'm concerned that we've kind of been working on this system without a bio as the striker and now it's changed. I think overall the playoff push can be achieved. It's going to take a lot of graft from everyone. And for me, the players that aren't playing need to push more because the likes of Keelan Avery, the likes of uh, Cockrell Mollet, they need to be pushing more and harder to be getting these starts and this game time. But we will we will see. I think Southend's a big opportunity. They are. Obviously, we've seen that they can play. Um, we weren't great against them. They weren't great, but they beat us. And they will know that they've beaten us and it will give them confidence. We need to go there with whichever the new system is and we need to work damn hard at it to try and get a result straight off the back of a pretty disappointing uh, deadline day. And I think it's a good opportunity for the new players or whoever's coming in to stake a claim. If they perform really well, who knows, they could stay in the side. Lee Reynolds, are loans and youth players what the future will be? I wouldn't mind a couple of loans each season from Villa, Wolves or Albion if it suits us. I think, I don't think Clark will have set out this season going, I want five loans by the end of January. Um, a, hand, a hand has been forced. Um, obviously, left back. We'd got Nurse in. I feel that if Nurse had stayed and Jules would have left, we wouldn't have got Max Melbourne in. Which, it's a bit of a, a, a double blow um, with Nurse going as well. So I think in, in that respect, we wouldn't have probably pushed for another loan E to have in. I think Nurse and Cockrell Mollet would have been the kind of the battle for left back. Um, I... Again, talking about hand being forced, I feel that 
the loan of Vincent was with an eye of Guthrie. Also, I don't know what happened with my voice there. Uh, with an eye of Guthrie leaving, I would assume talks had been ongoing between both parties. Um, so I assume he's come in maybe with a view to signing him, like permanently, but who knows. Um, I think he's, he's a replacement for Guthrie. Obviously, we know about the attacking options that we were very limited and that we've been reliant on free loans. I do feel that it might be the case again next season because it, this financial uh, turmoil from the pandemic isn't just going to go away. It's not going to end as soon as fans get back in the ground. What I feel is the, is the thing is, though, that now we will probably be looking to sign a couple of these loanies if they impress or at least extend their deals. I feel that if Wright does well or if Reed does well, I mean, I know I spoke to Gabriel about this uh, with Birmingham and then again, obviously, with uh, the Villa podcast to do with Wright. There we go. Uh, that both players haven't got consistent game time and that if, if it goes well in these first six months, we could be in either a longer deal at Walsall, which I think would be good. I think the same with Vincent. If he's getting consistent football here, Bournemouth might decide that we're going to keep him there. Um, I, I do feel that next season we're, we're going to have a couple of loans in, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. The The big thing for me yesterday was, if we've just got 300,000 in, do we want to blow even half of that on signing two players, pulling them out of non-league, getting them from fellow League 2 clubs when realistically the League 2 and 1 players probably wouldn't have been playing that much and National League is a difference between National League and League 2. I think it's riskier buying players than it was loaning. Um, that being said, you obviously want more players to be your own so that we can work on them. I do feel that loans will be the way forward next season, or not the way forward, but we'll make up the squad next season, especially if we have a pretty big rebuild on our hands. So I would assume or expect us to really have to, yeah, have to get a couple of loans in for that. Uh, Lewis Bullock, why didn't we just sell Adebayo to Hearts a week ago and then at least have a chance to sign a better striker? Uh, rather than a deadline day panic? Good question. What I've heard is that Hearts were undercutting uh, the transfer fee. From what I've... Again, these aren't confirmed sources. These are just rumours. What I've heard is that we've got more for him that with him going now than we would have done with Hearts. I believe Hearts were potentially trying to give us the money that we would have expected, maybe plus a little bit more if he'd have gone for free in the summer, whereas Luton have kind of gone for him more to buy him to secure it. Um, that's what I've heard. So I think there is more, I think there was more of a financial benefit for him to go to Luton than to Hearts. That's just rumours. Please don't quote me on that. Um, because I, I haven't had anything confirmed. The other thing is, I feel, I feel we actually probably used the time. The club probably knew that Adebayo was, was heading out the door. So I think we probably used the time to actually scout, and work on a replacement. I don't think, the bid from Luton coming in, yesterday. Sunday, Saturday, whenever it came in, meant that the club went, ah, we need a player now. I reckon they were probably working on on your or other targets from when the Hearts bid came in. Because really, with both Jules and Adebayo, I think also, yes, the money's good, but I reckon both knew that they would be leaving the end of the season. And if they've, if they've turned around to the club and said, look, we're going to leave effectively for free in the summer 
if you sell us, you can at least make some money, then then they will have known that they'd have been off. So I think that's the reason. It's it is difficult because. We, we obviously don't know what's gone on and we look at Hearts and we go, well, they were offering money for him. Why didn't we accept that? But I do believe it was more lucrative for him to go to Luton. I also don't think it's a bad thing to sell a player to a club a couple of leagues above. Luton are obviously going to have a larger squad depth in the championship than Hearts will and a better quality, I believe. So you never know if they've got potential players that they're thinking of of loaning out or releasing on a free relationship between clubs are good so who knows but that's again optimism cap on right next question jimmy simple question had the board after rebuilding relations with the fans yet again lost all trust of the fans is this a massive fu or middle finger to the fans that have backed the club through the pandemic, uh, is this as bad of a transfer window as when we sold Fox and Dan? Um, that's a difficult question. Uh, I think it's a loaded question at the moment too. Um, I expect soon to hear from Lee Pomlet again. Um I expect he will do a, a a video, as he does, because he will know that the fans have got these concerns. He will know that selling two players when he's released something before saying that he wants to keep the best players because of a playoff push um, is important. So I expect to hear from him, and I think it will be quite. He will be quite open with it. I don't think it's it's a F you back to the fans. I don't think that at all. I think the money at the end of the day was too too good to turn down. Um, and I I do also believe that deals deals are never really done. The sale will have been agreed a couple of days before, but interest will have been going a few days before that. So I feel that. Although it may seem like Melbourne and your are kind of panic replacements, they will have they're not just going to have been players that they went, right, who's available. I do think that there will have been some the work will have gone into them. They will have been targets that were drawn up um at like contingent contingency planning. I also feel that under Pomlick compared to Bonser, things the contingency plans are probably more thought of. I think Pomlet will probably think about it more than um, than Bonser would have done. I think Bonser would have probably sold Adebayo to Hearts at the first asking because it was money in and then worried about it after, where I think Pomlet plans a bit more. Uh, what was the second part to your question? Ah, Scott, Dan uh, and Fox. Um... That is a difficult question. Uh, I will admit that I wasn't as tuned in when that went on. Um, it's not really my area of expertise. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't really know the kind of inner workings of the club or really the kind of the state of play with a lot of things back then as I do now, which... I mean, I was, I was in my mid-teens, so yeah. And I also think that I was a bit less informed because there wasn't the social media presence then. There wasn't as much of that going on. But I don't, I don't think it's been as bad. No, I think a lot of fans have asked the question. I've seen a lot of different viewpoints. The the thing there was that we we sold two very good defenders for us. And we had to really rebuild one area of the team more than the other. I think the fact that this is spread a bit, we've got a more settled defence. I know that we haven't kept clean sheets in a while, but hear me out. I feel that the defence has settled down a bit more. Um, 
And I feel that we've got probably a little bit more squad depth in that area. Um, and then going forward again, I, I still feel that we've got options. Um, and this is with players that are out injured coming back as well. I think we all saw the difference that James Clark makes to the defence um, when he was out and when he came back. And I think the same, obviously, with, with Holden. Holden is going to be key when he comes back. So I don't think it's as bad. Um, it's not great. But I, I do genuinely think that we've had worse transfer markets as well. I think when we bought in the likes of Ungu, when we bought in the likes of Bialik, they've been real panic signings. And yes, I could be proved completely wrong because we haven't seen these players kick a ball yet. But I don't think the squad is in as bad a state as really as as people are kind of making out but we'll see um logan richards who do you think will be signed or who do you think we will be signing on permanent from these loans um i mean i've touched on this before i think melbourne could be an option he's had a couple of seasons at lincoln now i don't know how long he's got left on his contract but i he's not really broken into the team he's been on the bench a lot and he's made a few appearances but he's not really kind of pushed his way in so i feel that he could be potential and i would expect him to be playing more than cockerel mollet i feel vincent maybe but i'm doubtful um, you're only signed for uh, Oxford in the summer and he struggled to obviously break into the side. But their fans their fans were quite positive about him, but I think they realised that he needs game time. Um, whether he's going to get it or not, whether, whether he's going to be one of these loanies that doesn't feature that much is yet to be seen. I think Wright maybe could stay extend his loan to next season but it really does depend because if if a league one side comes in and offers him game time in league one then they aren't going to turn that down uh, and i think the same with reed reed will be wanting to get games under his belt and if he does perform for us i have no doubt that if we do need to some extra reinforcements up top that we've got a bit of a relationship with birmingham he could stay on loan next season but yeah, if I if I was putting a bet on, I'd say that Melbourne's the one that we'd be signing permanently. But I, I think there's a lot of um, there'll be a lot more at play than just what we can offer. I think there's going to be the parent clubs are going to have decisions to make, and I think like with Scrimshaw, unfortunately we do have to realise that we are a League Two side. Yes, we might get promoted, and if we do, we might be able to keep them in League One. But I think these clubs are going to want to try and push them up another step. Nick Etheridge, do you see Josh Gordon moving up top given Clark's reluctance to trust young, inexperienced players in key positions? Yes, I do. I really do think that Gordon's going to be starting up top. The only way I can see him playing in behind is sort of this, which I know completely contradicts what I've said. But until Holden gets back, I think having Wright or Nolan on the right wing, Gordon in behind and Wes on the left, or vice versa with Gordon and Wes, with either your or Reed up top might be the way forward for now. But I think once Holden comes back, he has to play in that number 10. And I think with Wright and Nolan showing what they can do on the wing, it means that Holden will play in the middle. So I would expect I would expect him to be coming back in. Obviously it's going to take him a couple of games to get match fit. I think for February we can expect to see Gordon in behind the striker unless we decide to go 4-4-2, in which case I I would expect to see Gordon alongside the striker. Um but I think the end goal is once the players once we've got a fully fit squad, I would expect Gordon to be up top 
at the moment. But we don't, again, we don't know if Reed or York could come in and have an absolutely flying start. Um, who knows? But me personally, I think Gordon will stay just behind the striker for now. And then when Holden comes in, he will be pushed forward. And I don't think that's a bad thing. So I think Gordon plays well up top. And as uh, to quote one pod beyond, he was at one point uh, scoring a goal every other game, a one in two striker, which if we can get him back to that form, brilliant. And that is the end of the Q&A. Uh, just checking to see if I've had any last minute ones in. I don't think so. There's been a few about, obviously, Clark, Pomlet, the season as a whole. I am looking to do a piece on Clark and Pomlet uh, in a couple of weeks' time. I think we need to see these players play, and we've got a few games coming up. So I think I will do that down the line, maybe two or three weeks down the line. But thank you for all your questions. Um, if you've enjoyed the Q&A, then please let me know. It'd be really nice to, to do more of these hopefully with nicer topics in mind um, I've kind of kept it around the half an hour mark but I've gone a bit over which is always always the case but yes thank you all for getting in touch sorry I couldn't answer everyone so I think there's about 40 questions in the end which is fantastic so thank you very much please give the channel a like and subscri uh, subscribe and yeah speak to you soon and up the saddlers